me start video. We're going to talk about an interesting type of differential equation, which has a direct connection to the types of differential equations we've been solving, second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. Now, a, a Cauchy-Euler equation does not have uh, constant coefficients. Its coefficients are a constant times a power of x. And the power of x matches the order of the derivative where it's multiplied. So let's start our analysis of this type of equation with a second order homogeneous equation. And our strategy is we're going to first try to solve the homogeneous equation and then we'll use variation of parameters uh, to be able to find the particular solution or a particular solution. So how are we going to proceed? Well, our coefficients are polynomials and maybe that will motivate us to say, hmm, maybe, or the coefficients are powers of x, maybe the solution is a power of x. So let's try that. If y equals x to the power of m, we can just use the power rule to ca calculate an expression for y prime and y double prime. The next step would be to take those expressions and substitute them into the differential equation. Now notice, the power on x in the first term is m minus 2, and it's multiplied by x squared. So if I use the property of exponents, when I multiply those uh, out, I'll get x to the power of m. In the second term, I have x to the power of m minus 1, and that's multiplied by x. So again, that'll give me a, an x to the power of m. And, and then in the third term, I already have an x to the power of m. So I'm going to have a common factor of x to the power of m. And let me factor that out. So what's left over is just a polynomial in m. We've seen this before. It's a different polynomial, slightly different, but it leads to an auxiliary equation, which we can solve for m. And just like we saw before, we're going to solve it for m, and we're going to get three different cases. The first case would be uh, m has, or the, the solution to the auxiliary equation has two real distinct roots. So for example, if I look at this differential equation, which should equal zero. So let me go ahead and put that in there. And we'll have a equals 1, b equals negative 2, c equals negative 4. I can substitute those values into my auxiliary equation and go ahead and solve that equation for m. And I'll get two distinct real values, m equals 4 or m equals negative 1. So I'll have a constant times x to the power of 4 4 and a constant times x to the power of negative 1 as my solution. In the second case, we're going to have repeated real roots. So here's an, a bit of analysis. So uh, we know what the real root is going to be. That comes from the quadratic formula. Remember when we have repeated real roots, the discriminant, the term under the, uh, the, the expression under the radical is going to equal zero. So the only thing that's left is the negative, in this case, b minus a, that comes from the coefficient on m. 
over 2a. So we know what the repeated root is going to be in terms of our a, b, and c. And so I know what my first solution is, what it looks like for any given uh, equation which has this case. In order to find our second solution, we're going to go back to our reduction of order formula. So here's the formula. So let's see what, how it's going to work out. Uh, first, I need to rewrite my original differential equation in standard form. So I have to divide everything by ax squared. And so that tells me that the term on y prime, that's going to be the p function, is going to be b over a times 1 over x. And so when I put a minus sign in front of that and integrate it, I get negative b over a times the natural log of x, which is the same as the natural log of, of x raised to the power of negative b over a. So that works out nicely because then in my formula for the reduction of order, I'm going to have e as the exponent and raise that to the power of natural log of absolute value x raised to the negative b over a. And so uh, that gives us x raised to the power of negative b over a. Now, what about the numer denominator here, which is x to the power of 2m1? Well, we know what m1 is. So if I just multiply that by 2, I'll get the uh, expression um, b minus a. Uh, I got to be a little bit careful here. 2m1 should have a minus sign. So I think I've got that corrected. Here it is. There's the correction. 2m1 should be a minus b over a, which would be 1 minus b over a. So we have a minus b over a. We have another minus b over a. And so x to the power of 2m1 using the properties of exponent could also be written as x. That'd be x to the power of 1 times x to the power of negative b over a. And now you see how this is going to work out for us because I'm going to have x to the 2 times m1 power as being x raised to the power of 1 minus b over a. And using the property of exponents, negative b over a minus 1 in quantity, 1 minus b over a. The uh, b over a part is going to add to make 0. And I'm going to be left with x to the minus 1 dx and I'll, in, as my integrand. And when I integrate, of course, I get natural log of the absolute value of x. To avoid having the absolute value, we're just going to choose our interval of definition to be contained in 0 to infinity. So x is going to be positive. So my second solution then would be x to the power of m1, that's my first solution, y1, times the natural log of x. And so now instead, you know, if you think back before we had uh, with uh, equations with constant coefficients, we would have e to the power of m1x plus a constant x e to the m power of m1x. So here we're going to take our x to the power of m1 and multiply it times natural log of x. All right, so let's work out an example where we have uh, repeated roots. So let's take our values of a, b, and c, get our auxiliary equation. That is actually 2m plus 1 quantity squared. So we have m equals negative 1 half, and it's a repeated root. It has multiplicity 2. So we just learned then that our solution would be c1 x to the power of negative 1 half, and then a c2 x to the power of negative 1 half. We just multiply that times natural log of x. So our third case is we're going to have complex conjugate roots. So we're going to write those as alpha plus or minus i times beta. 
And so uh, we could write our solution as just uh, C1 times X to the power of alpha plus I beta plus C2 X to the power of alpha minus I beta, but we want to have our solutions to have a real values, so no I in them. So we're gonna proceed uh, in a very similar way to what we did previously. We use properties of exponents uh, to write uh, those equations, I'm sorry, those solutions as x to the alpha times x to the i beta, and then x to the alpha times x to the minus i beta. We have a common factor of x to the alpha, and that's a, alpha is a real number. And so, um, and beta is a positive number. Uh, just to be clear. So we're going to go ahead and factor that x to the alpha out. We're still left with x to the i beta and x to the minus i beta. And we would like to use uh, Euler's equation, but Euler's equation is only valid when the base is e. So what can we do about that? Well, we'll use the change of base formula. So the change of base formula says that, well, x, you can really write x as e to the natural log of x. Remember e and natural log, they're inverses of each other. So e to the natural log of x equals x. And then we'll take that whole thing and raise it to the power of i beta. But a power raised to a power, there's a property of exponents, means that you can multiply the exponents together. So we could just write that as e to the i beta times natural log of x. That whole thing is now our exponent. So if I rewrite it this way using the change of base, now I can apply Euler's formula. And now the input to the sine and the cosine will be beta times natural log of x. So here we see this natural log of x appearing, just like we saw it with repeated roots. And e to the minus i beta natural log of x can be written this way. And then we can take sums and differences of these two equations to get expressions for uh, e to the i beta natural log of x or x to the uh, i beta, which are real valued. They're just going to involve sine and cosine of beta natural log x. So our solution now is going to be x to the alpha. x to the alpha was our common factor, so we factored that out. We'll have a constant of cosine of beta times natural log of x plus a different constant times sine of beta natural log of x. So we're not just using beta, we're going to use the product of beta times natural log of x. So let's see an example where we have complex conjugate roots. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the auxiliary equation, solve that using the quadratic formula. We're going to get 1 half plus or minus 2i. So alpha is 1 half, beta here is 2. So the form of the solution is going to be x to the alpha, so x to the 1 half, a constant times cosine of 2 times natural log of x plus a different constant c2 times sine of 2 times natural log of x. Remember the 2 is our beta. Now if I want to solve the initial value problem, I need to impose the initial conditions. I need the derivative uh, in order to impose the second initial condition, which is y prime, y prime of 1 equals negative 1 half. Now it's uh, fortuitous that we are evaluating that when x equals 1. And the reason is that the natural log of 1 is 0. And I know that the cosine of 0 is 1 and sine of 0 is zero. So that makes the computation a little bit simpler. We still have to be very careful with all these terms, but it turns out then that c2 is negative one half. So now I am able to write down the solution to the initial value problem. Well, what if I have non-homogeneous equations? Well, I now have a solution. I have a 
complementary solution, a solution to the homogeneous equation, and we'll find the solution to the, uh, or the particular solution using the variation of parameters. So let's remind ourselves how we do that. So here is a non-homogeneous equation. Let's solve that by first looking at the auxiliary equation. And solving that, we get two real distinct roots. And so uh, we have our complementary so solution being c1 x to the power of 1, because m equals 1 is one of the roots, and c2 x cubed. And again, cubed because m equals 3 is the other solution. So the variation of parameters, remember we have a y1 and a y2. Uh, we're going to go ahead and solve this, but to, to solve it, I'll have to have my differential equation in standard form. So I went ahead and divided every term by x squared. So I'll need to calculate my Ronskian, my w1 and w2 using the formulas. In order to calculate the Ronskian, I need y1 and y prime, y1 prime y2 and y2 prime. And then I just take the product of the diagonals, subtract the product of the anti-diagonals, and my solution is just 2x cubed. Uh, w1 is formed by taking my right-hand side function, multiplying it times y2, and then changing the sign. So I get a negative 2x fifth e to the x. Whereas w2 is just the function, the right-hand side function times y1. Now this right-hand side function is the function after we write it in standard form. And then I'll go ahead and divide uh, w1 by w. That gets me uh, u prime, u sub 1 prime. I'll integrate that. I need you to use the integration by parts twice. I didn't show all the details. This is the resulting function. Uh, finding u2 is significantly easier, just the antiderivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. And then once I've got uh, u1 and u2, I can find a particular solution by taking u1 and multiplying it times y1. u2 gets multiplied by y2. And uh, that will give me my a particular solution. And then if I wanted the general solution, I would just take the complementary solution and add it to my particular solution. For some reason, I wrote a 2 here. But no, that should just be my particular solution. And that gives me a general solution. So there is a very nice connection to the differential equation solution when there are constant coefficients. And so in fact, with a, a clever substitution, uh, we can actually rewrite the Cauchy-Euler equation as an equation with constant coefficients. And the substitution we need to make is t equals natural log of x, which is equivalent to saying x equals e to the t. And so then uh, a need to know dx dt, that's also e to the t. And then in my uh, Cauchy-Euler equation, I want to replace dy dx with some expression for dy dt. And I want to replace the second derivative with respect to x. I should have a squared here. Um, with an expression involving the second derivative of y with respect to t. So there's a little bit of work here. I mean, we used the chain rule, and we're going to use the chain rule again. But before we get to the chain rule, we're just going to do some basic calculus, which says the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. We have an expression for the first derivative, which is a product. So we use the product rule. And then uh, I'm going to replace this d by dx 
with something that has a d by dt in it by again using the chain rule and the fact that dx by dt is e to the t and it's also e to the x. So we're taking d by dt and dividing it by x or d by t and multiplying it by 1 over x. And so our resulting expression then would be uh, we still have the 1 over x times d by dt of dy dt times 1 over e to the t, but I'm actually going to rewrite that 1 over e to the t as 1 over x. So now I have a multiplier of 1 over x squared times derivatives of y with respect to t. So now notice that my first derivative or my expression for dy dx has a multiplier of 1 over x. My expression for the second derivative of y with respect to x has a multiplier of 1 over x squared. And that's exactly what we're looking for because the first, I mean, sorry, the second derivative is multiplied by x squared. Then we're going to divide by x squared will be left with a constant. The first derivative is multiplied times x, but our new expression has a multiplier of 1 over x, so we'll be left with a constant. So our transformed equation now has constant coefficients. So let's go ahead and work out an example using this technique. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, Remember that our transformation here is x equals e to the t, or t equals natural log of x. I'm just going to use the formula that we wrote on our previous slide there. And so uh, I'm going to make this transformation. I'm just going to transfer the coefficients. So a equals 1, b is negative 1, c is 1. And then I'm going to change the natural log of x to t. So here I have a times dy d squared y over dt squared minus dy dt. b is negative 1. There's no more x. So I'm just going to subtract negative dy dt. And then uh, c is 1. So I just have plus y. And I change the natural log of x to t. Just made that substitution. So now I'm going to collect the like terms. This is in standard form. So let me go ahead and look at the auxiliary equation for uh, this differential, second order differential equation with constant coefficients now. And so we get um, a single real solution with multiplicity 2, so a repeated root. And so this would be our solution in terms of t, our complementary solution. And then in order to find the uh, particular solution, since we just have a very simple uh, right-hand side, just t, uh, that's one of the uh, types that we can use with undetermined coefficients. So I'll go ahead and use the undetermined coefficients. Remember, the idea is uh, we're going to assume that the particular solution has the form a times t plus b. We take the first and second derivative and substitute that into our differential equation in terms of t and set the coefficients equal to each other. So we get a equals 1 and b equals 2. All right, so what do we know? We know that uh, we have a complementary solution, we have a particular solution, and that's all in terms of t. That's our solution in terms of t. And the only thing that's left is to write that in terms of x. So we'll replace all of our e to the t's with x. Any t values get replaced with the natural log of x. And this is the exact same solution we would get if we were solving it using our Cauchy-Euler techniques, where we assume that uh, y equals x to the power of m. 
So I, I hope you find these uh, equations interesting like I do. Uh, and uh, it really is just an interesting transformation between the two that you can use essentially the same techniques using this transformation.